Welcome to the Compile Podcast. This is a show where two programmers talk about anything and everything. My name is Nick. I am the host of the podcast with my good friend Jasper. Hello. In each episode, we'll have a topic, and the goal of the episode is to compile the topic down to a list of essential points for our listeners. So this week, we are talking about something a bit more serious than、uh, the week before.、Uh, but before that, let's sort of just chat a little bit because you just came in. Spent a good five minutes washing my hands, trying to get coronavirus off my hands. So, yeah, yeah.、Uh, I think everybody listening to this probably has an idea of what's happening. Uh, uh, just to re, just to echo、uh, the personal points: just wash your hands and make sure you don't like touch your eyes and whatnot.、Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a pretty good、um, document on the BBC network that shows you like a lot of the like personal tips that you can. Used to protect yourself, but、uh, take care of yourself and、uh, don't go outside. And just just practice basic hygiene. I would say. Yeah, <laughs> we we actually got noticed、uh, recently that we are、uh, strongly advised to stay at home and、yeah. not go to work, which means that the next few weeks, some my productivity is gonna drop like. Uh, to ten percent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucky. No, I, I wish the university would do the same. I'm a bit concerned at this point.、Mm. But I think I think that the students are just slowly, slowly、uh, taking down the university on their own. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. I mean, you are more outdoors than than me for sure, because <laughs> you cycle and also you you walk around uni quite a bit、yeah. than me, right? So I I just stay in the building and for the day.、Uh, yeah. Um, what's the what's the feeling among everybody? I mean, it's it really depends. I feel like the Western people are way too chill right now.、Mm. Um, I I'm 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 always a fan of being just cautious enough. So just wash your hands, but don't go full panic. Um, but some of the some of my Chinese peers have just literally flown back to China、uh, out of fears of the virus. So that might be a bit extreme on the other side. Uh, you know,、yeah. I I like I like sitting in the happy medium.、Um, don't hoard food, but do wash your hands. That kind of okay. Then, then don't then steal the toilet paper. I don't know what's wrong with people, but honestly, <laughs> I've been I've been racking my brains about like why would that? I I I cannot I cannot come up with a logic line that would justify, you know, hoarding toilet paper. I I reckon no, I don't know. Like one person just bought more toilet paper than normal. And I think that's just a chain chain reaction. Yeah. I I honestly don't know what people are thinking buying hordes of of soil, but、yeah. it's the the strangest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I I can see you know, for like, disinfectant or or um wet wipes and whatnot, but <laughs> toilet paper seriously. Like... What was funny was the first day that they restarts、really、hoarding stuff, they they bought all of the pasta, all of the toilet paper, but they left the canned food aisle completely untouched. <laughs> Which is like the one aisle you do want to be in. Yeah. I'm. I'm honestly. I'm so puzzled right now. So um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have been buying some stuff at home. I've, I just. I've bought like a decent amount of pasta and rice. Just you know, if, in case we are we're in for the long run. Yeah. No. I. You know, we always have a kilo of rice on hand, and I. Every time I go to the store, I just take take back one extra can of beans. You know, ah, but you know, I, I'm not gonna go out and fill fill up a shopping cart full. Of, yeah, 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 I I, I know just, what you mean. It's a bit, it's a bit ridiculous.、Mm. Honestly, you know, we do live in a first world country, as far as I'm aware.、Mm. I'm assuming that everything goes south. Yeah, we're recording this in London right now, and、uh, I I don't think there has been like numerous reportings uh, uh reports on confirmed cases in London, but not in. I at least I I don't remember seeing a a very. Clear note, clear report that says this is happening in London. I, I've seen like、yeah. outskirts of London, uh, or somewhere close by, uh, like uh in Brighton or somewhere else. But uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm sure that it's it's in London now. It's、uh, it's a matter of time. You need one infected person on the tube, and that's in the entirety of London gone. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I I I do try to stay away from the tube. That's my one. I I mean yeah I yeah, guess yeah. that's easy for me because I have a bike but yeah, yeah. Same, everybody same. tries to do that. I was I was chatting with a friend uh from work the other day and they went, oh did you wear a face mask today com- coming to work? I was like no, and they and they just looked at me and went, huh okay, 
but <laughs> it's, it's the tube. I was like, ah, oh, I don't take the tube to oh, work. Yeah. I work to work <laughs> on a very isolated road, and um, uh, you know, you know my work route to work. It's yeah, like yeah, behind it's the, the canal. canal right? Yeah, it's behind the canal, so it's it's very narrow, which means there's a lot, a lot of people, and yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's been quite peaceful. I mean, honestly, as long as nobody's coughing directly in your face. Yeah, I I did get a bit uh, scared uh, this one time on uh, I think I was at the intersection just waiting for the lights, and the old lady next to me started I I won't say violently coughing but coughing quite noticeably, <laughs> and and I went oh, all right. <laughs> every every now and then I I choke in my food. Uh, and I just, I just like try to signal to the people around me. I'm not sick. I'm just choking. <laughs> it's like it's yeah. a little hard to. Oh, I did something like that as well. I was. Uh, this is this is such an embarrassing story. I was, um, I was trying to clear up the last bit of my tea, um, the other day, and you know sometimes because uh, I bought tea by you know by uh, by the bunch, and there's sometimes like little powder dusts. Yeah. That, that comes with the tea and I was trying I was just trying to like get it off and then I accidentally inhaled some of it and then started sneezing because you know the, these are like if you if you're in a situation you will sneeze as a human being yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I did it at the office and everybody looked at me and went oh there's a Chinese dude sneezing like in the office what's going on kill me now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah uh, you know all in all just be careful and Make sure you you um, yeah just as just was said you know exercise uh, sensible hygiene for yourself and uh, for your families and yeah I think it will be fine I'm actually yeah my my girlfriend actually stay uh, is staying in China right now and yeah she's been through quote unquote through mm-hmm. this um, this uh, pandemic now so uh, you know. I I've I'm confident that you know we we're gonna be all right. Yeah, I'm I'm not too worried. I'll see it through. Okay. Uh, so turning into a much more ominous note. Uh, can, we, can we get more ominous? <laughs> <is the question? laughs> so yeah. Uh, I so this week's topic is anxiety and how you know how one can deal with it. This um the genesis of this topic was. A couple weeks ago, when uh, when Caprice, when, when my girlfriend is uh, is job hunting, and because of coronavirus, there's a lot of you know stagnation in terms of getting the process through. Um, you know, you you weren't able to see people face to face, and which means which makes interviewing a little bit more difficult. And uh, she was quite anxious about all of this stuff. She was like, "Oh, am I gonna get a job? I'm gonna be like slack off at home and." Blah blah blah, and not blah blah blah. They are valid concerns. Uh, concerns. Um, but yeah, it, it just rose up to me that you know, these you know, anxieties can really sneak up on you. Uh, and if you, if you are just like unprepared for it, sometimes it can be a bit more, uh, hard to deal with. I've I've also had lots of friends who have had panic attacks happening to them i've had one too uh you know a couple of years ago when i thought i lost my wallet on on the taxi yeah. and with all my bank cards and my ids and whatnot i was oh, like yeah. in, in a foreign country and i was like i'm gonna die here <laughs> yeah. i'll find my body in a ditch yeah. somewhere yeah. yeah no i think everybody well a lot of people do have to deal with anxiety at some point in their lives uh, especially in like the kind of circles we've been in you know, university there's automatically kind of a yeah kind of a expectation that you're performing at a certain level mm-hmm. uh, that does stuff to people. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I remember at least in Edinburgh it wasn't too intense. It was like, oh, you know, you should you should always do your best. Uh, that's for sure. But yeah. uh, no one's gonna. Quote unquote, like judge you too much. No, that's true. But, but you I've judge seen, yourself, so. yeah, I've seen this somewhere else. I mean, growing up in China, <laughs> uh, and also somewhere uh, when I was um, when I was ex- on exchange uh, in America, I also saw like some of these kind of stuff. And yeah, it, uh, definitely academics are 
you know, a good source to to bring you anxieties, especially for like, because even in academia, you have like deadlines and whatnot. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, it's fairly yeah. high pressure in terms of yeah. workload and yeah, yeah. yeah so I, it's uh, it's something that everybody has to deal with, and actually dealing with it is not so simple. Mm-hmm. Um, this is also very true uh, at work. For for me myself. It actually wasn't too bad of late, but sometimes when when we do get um, projects with external deadlines that are, you know, uh, expected to be there by not just by you know the company but by the general public, then you know there's a there's a certain amount of responsibility on you, and that could be that could be a great source of stress. And uh, uh, I experienced this not too long ago. I won't say what it is, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it, I'm just happy I got through it. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, but but to go back to the point, I think you touched on something quite interesting where you said like lots of people have to deal with anxiety at some point in their life. And actually, I think, you know, it's something we can expand a bit more on uh, where it's I think it's fair to say anybody would have had anxiety at some point in their life. Uh, it's just some people have dealt with it a little bit easy, uh, a little bit better, or they're just a little bit more, I don't know, carefree uh, <laughs> type of person. Uh, yeah. But yeah, which which kind of sort of leads to my point here uh, of, you know, first of all, to in order to deal with something, you must acknowledge its existence, right? Yeah. So you have to say, okay, there's a, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling stressed. Like, that's the first, uh, that's, you know, acknowledging it is the first step of, you know, s- sorting it out. Does that? Yeah, yeah. no, that's, that's, that's exactly it. We, in, in, I don't know if there's something similar in English, but in Dutch we have a saying, um, a good start is half, half the work. Uh, and like, how's that starting. Say, how's that, uh, how do you say that in Dutch? A good begin is half the work. Okay. Any um, Dutch yeah, person? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so, but I, I think, I think that's actually very true. Like, you, as long as you don't acknowledge it, it's not gonna change. And taking that first step in acknowledging it is, I think, um, probably the single most important step you can take. Yeah, I've seen I've seen sort of two, uh, how should I say? It? I've seen two bad outcomes that could come from not acknowledging it. Uh, one is you, you literally do not know about being like you cannot acknowledge of yourself being stressed and. Um, and sometimes this leads to, uh, I don't know if this makes sense. It's like stress of being stressed. It's like, I'm worried that I am worrying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually do that. Yeah. I think I, probably everybody does to some extent. Like if you de- if you dealt with anxiety at any point in your in your life, then the second you get stressed, you instantly just go, oh god, yeah, here we go again. Yeah. Um, which really like it, it compounds really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's a it's a reinforcing. Uh, yeah, it's like a d- downward spiral, which, yeah, it's not not exactly fun. Mm-hmm. And the other, uh, the other one is, uh, you know, once you don't acknowledge being stressed, you don't actually like know this be this thing, uh, that's depressing inside of you, and, uh, and then you are just sad for no reason, and then you this grows longer and longer, and you become sort of, ac- accustomed to it. Yeah, and, there's um. I've heard from from people with like proper depression before that actually a lot of people don't find out they're depressed Mm. you know that how they're feeling is not normal Mm. until way down the line yeah Uh, which I'm assuming also kind of applies to anxiety where you know if you've always felt kind of that way and if that always pops up then you just start assuming that's kind of normal yeah um which I mean to some extent, it probably is normal, but that doesn't mean it's good, and you should just accept it. I mean, it, it is normal that you f- that you uh, encounter stressful situations, but you know, it's definitely not normal that you are stressed all the time. No, exactly. It's like a string cannot be taut like uh, <laughs> the whole time. It's gonna like snap at some point. Oh. Um, you know, don't go that don't go far down that route. Also, uh, you know, <laughs> talk to people, see see doctors, and. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I think there there is a point being made that, you know, after saying that, okay, I feel 
I'm stressed out. Uh, there's anxiety in me. Uh, but that's not that's a good start. But we should sometimes dig deeper in that, right? What exactly is is causing me this stress? What exactly is causing me this anxiety? Um, and just a matter of thinking it through sometimes is not enough. And from for my for me at least, uh, narrating it out is so. Um, you know, writing it down, or or saying it out loud to people or to just to yourself. Yeah. Also, it it it's just a matter of expressing it out, um. So it becomes explicit, and yeah. you know that has that has been a um, a great uh, you know, a great step in terms of dealing with it. Would you yeah, think? yeah. I think I think anxiety or a lot of these problems are probably very deeply rooted usually. Mm. Um, and and finding out what it is is not is definitely not straightforward. And actually, writing down like you, I I've got like a little notebook. Uh, you know, whenever I'm feeling, I mean, that's more in general. Whenever I'm feeling not on top of things, I just mm. kind of write write it down in that book, and it just kind of reframes everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I I actually feel like if you ever go to um like a psychiatrist, I've never been to an actual psychiatrist, but those those types of people, um, I feel like you're probably doing 90% of the work and all they're doing is asking like the right questions to keep you talking. So actually, you know, a lot of therapy is probably more self therapy than you realize. Mm. Um, so, so all that is is probably actually a really, really good way to get to that route. Yeah. I realized a lot of the stuff that we're talking about that you can probably get it from like a proper counseling, but it's just, these are the, uh, so the tips that we have or sort of, uh, the the points that we have here are sort of distilled from our own lives and yeah like I'm I'm by no means an expert on this but this is what I've always felt yeah how, how that works it, it has worked for us yeah. and you know we think it can work for more people and uh, especially in you know in this industry um, there are you know common grounds that can be reached yeah. it, it's it's an industry it's a it's a weird industry. Uh, that we are in for for computer science it's partially uh, engineering or very logic based yeah. that you have to you know keep a clear head but also a lot of times very um, creative right because because you have to come up with um, ways to to solve this and um, you know that that is more closer to say uh, to like architecture yeah it's actually you actually get the the full you kind of if, if you compare it to building things which i guess yeah. is, is a natural comparison you kind of get the full thing where you do yeah. everything from architecture down to the nails that hammer mm. or you know depending on what your exact role is but you're you're going to be involved with all those steps whereas an architect will probably never see a nail um i don't know i've never i've never <laughs> been an architect but <laughs> sorry any architects are listening yeah. <laughs> i mean um, that's very true the, uh, so you know being in this industry uh, what we thought that you know the the anxieties that comes with it that we've experienced uh, are you know in a, in a way more uh, reflective to a lot of other industries right yeah. so for creative industries for you know writing uh, or singing or like composing or something like that uh, or to a bit more logic based uh, industries such as uh, engineering uh, yeah just typical automobile engineer. or stuff like that yeah. um so yeah we, so the that's what that's why i thought you know it's a it's a good chance for us to to sit down and talk about this stuff we might we might not reach anything um too significant these are probably st- uh tips that you've heard from elsewhere as well uh but we just thought you know it's nice that we can we can pair it with some of our personal experiences and you know that then it would make sense for uh for our audience to to absorb it and yeah. incorporate uh if needed yeah maybe you know this these are always a bit niche uh, or topics that people don't talk about uh and making it a bit more human and approachable i don't know if we can if we can even do that to some very minor extent that'd be great yeah so uh so yeah uh, and also just to make sure we cover this as well like i in no way we are saying 
there's only stress from like work or your or your um or your uni or something there, there's stress from like uh from just being yourself like from life really yeah and um you know these type of stuff are can be dealt with in a similar way and uh one of the things that happened to me uh, a while back not recently but a while back was i think just at the uh the age of graduation when when my student visa is expiring and i need to work out a new visa at the same time trying to sort out the uh the employment contract and also uh, also my actual studies that i need yeah. to finish in edinburgh and that was a lot of i think that was the that's probably the one time i actually snapped at my parents i was like nope this is this is so much stuff and yeah. uh and yeah so you know don't snap at your parents by the way and uh, <laughs> sometimes they deserve it i'm just gonna go out and say it okay <laughs> all right uh yeah but still like um you know getting through but i managed to go through it in the end uh you know, through help of friends, uh, through help of families, and uh, just about just by like reading a lot of stuff, and you, know, this is this is quite hard to talk about honestly, because yeah, it, uh, it, you know, once after after the hard times, you always forget what what happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the time. yeah, I, I just in general, it's it's not stuff you necessarily want to remember. Yeah, um, but the one the. There's one note, uh, there's one thought that I clearly remember from that time was like, you know, this isn't, this isn't the end of the world, right? If you, so there are many, many things that are on your plate. And if you mess up one thing, it's not like, it's not like you're done, right? The other stuff will go on and probably the stuff you mess, mess up with will be fine in the end. It's just like, it might take you a little bit longer. Yeah. At worst, you know, at worst, you're going to be set back a bit of time or you're going to lose x amount of money um but all of you know all of those in the grand scheme of things how how yeah. much are they gonna imp- you know every everybody always says and it's a bit of a cliche probably at this point you know two years down the line honestly are you gonna think back to this and think to yourself oh my god that was the worst thing that ever happened to me yeah i think a lot of the times uh, the anxieties are strengthened because you thought there were a lot at stake yeah, and they could might well be, but uh, still the in the end is, is it really worth uh is it really worth being so concerned about it? And also, if so much is at stake, um, you know we can the other way of thinking it, the more positive way of thinking it, we can do our best and and that's it. Right, we'll yeah. do our best, and what happen whatever happens is out of our control and. If there's a lot of stake and I happen to lose it, then, you know, that's how life is. I well, guess. What my girlfriend always says is, um, and I really like this one. I don't know if she, where she got it from, but she always um, tells me, don't suffer twice, which I think is very apt. As in, you know, if, if something is going to go wrong, don't suffer now in this moment. And then also when that thing has gone wrong and you're facing the consequences, most likely those consequences are going to be very minor either way but there's no point in if they're gonna happen and worrying about them now um and that's that's easier easier said than done i'm guessing um but it's 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 something that really helps me in, yeah one in thing yeah i i do and i do can see that one thing i've learned from experience is that most of the times the things are not as bad as you think and uh that might be only true for me but i tend to over exaggerate the bad outcomes and yeah. uh even though like there's a very small chance of it happening and you know you get like so stressed and oh if it does happen like my house is gonna burn down or something like i i used to always have this fear of like have i actually locked my doors and oh. <laughs> what if someone breaks in and and steal all my possessions and you know that's <laughs> It's it, and then uh, throughout throughout life, what happens was you know, uh, I I don't remember who told me this. It was like some someone from work very very long time ago. They went, you know, whatever you are worried about today, you're not gonna remember this thing in a week. No, honestly. Uh, in a week, you you won't even remember what you were worried about last week, and that's 
proven true so many times. I ha- I held it as uh, I held it uh, suspicious at first, and you know, throughout the years, I've seen this at work many many times, and I could be so stressed or so uh, confused and unhappy about uh, some some bugs that I've seen today that I wasn't able to solve, but. Um, in a week's time, I don't even remember that such a bug has ever happened because mm-hmm. I I would have solved it. And you know, having that sort of confidence in you, I mean, you, you don't you don't get it like automatically. It, it's sort of built up by yeah. by uh, experience. But you know, just having a little bit more when you do, when you do something well, you know, give yourself a pat on the back and just cultivate this kind of. Uh, confidence on yourself and when there is a uh, anxiety in you just tell yourself like i can't handle this this is gonna be fine i can't handle it now perhaps but you know in a week or in two weeks this isn't gonna be a problem yeah Um, just have that faith in you i'm guessing a lot of this is probably like just experience in life Mm. um you know i'm definitely not at the point yet where i have that amount of confidence in myself i would say oh no Um, (laughs) no no no, yeah no, no i'm not saying you but um like that's probably something that kind of as you go through life you gotta you gotta collect those those moments of worry and then kind of reflect on them afterwards and think back to yourself yeah that was bullshit well actually at some point my counselor in university recommended um every time you're like worried about something you know write it down and write down how worried you are about it and then after it's over write down how bad it actually was and like compare those scores i've never actually done it but it sounds like a very it sounds really fun actually and it, and it does sound like the kind of thing where if you if you kind of start seeing that pattern in yourself where you always over dramatize things yeah i um, know it's it's a sort of like telling yourself uh telling your old self actually that you know you've misjudged it and, yeah you know and most of the times you've if most misjudged it to the to the wor- to the worst. And yeah. I don't think I've ever not misjudged something to be honest. Yeah. You know what though? Because there there's something I was really impressed about you and uh, in university where you were so chill about all the exams. Oh, that's that's um, survival strategy. Because <laughs> because you know what happens usually is before the exams, um, I will be studying and then and then I would text you and be like, should we should we come to a coffee shop and do some do some papers and do some revision together. You always come by like a little bit <laughs> sit there for like two hours and be like, I think we I think we got this. And then yeah. you're always the one to wrap up early and I to be honest, I think you were super chill throughout university about like all exams. I've been I haven't seen you like being really anxious about anything. No, so I, I think with me it's a very it's very black and white. I'm either really really worried about something or i'm not at all worried about it and exams are one of the things that i confidently step into so i don't feel the need to worry about it uh, but then loads of other stuff like my last year of uni was an absolute mess and uh, that was probably a compound of other things that were going on in my life um but you know my dissertation for example was kind of a mess and that that got me a lot of anxiety in the end mm. Um, so you know everybody's their their own their own kind of yeah. things they their own pitfalls yeah um, and I happen to be very chill in exams <laughs> yeah that's great um, yeah. so I guess you know these are sort of the sort of the mental points that or, or mental tips that you can leverage for uh for dealing with anxiety but uh you know this wouldn't be a engineering podcast without some practical tips <laughs> and um one of the things that i've seen people use a lot uh, i've read about this extensively um i've even tried it myself but it just hasn't paid off for me that much <laughs> is uh you know breathing exercises where uh i actually read a book i, I don't know if i have the book still Oh, I do actually. Uh, <laughs> I actually wrote, uh, read a book about this uh, topic where it's just like a, it's almost like a children's book where they just tells you, uh, you know, relax, breathe, and also like just focus on breathing. Yeah. Only and don't think about anything. Just think about your breath and, um, which is close to meditation, but it's a it's 
a bit more for a relaxing purpose. Yeah, so, I've, I've never been able to do the whole meditating thing. Yeah. I don't have the patience for it, I don't think. But breathing, just, you know, whenever you do get into that, that kind of fight or flight response that your body will have when you actually have proper anxiety, just breathing is a very good strategy. Um, also, I've, I've seen this, like, this only worked for me once where I was watching a movie uh, called The Intern. I don't know if you've seen this movie mm. where... <laughs> Funny enough, this is like two, two middle-aged uh, men trying to work as intern at Google and what happened. I, I'll, I'll link it in the in description. It's like Owen Wilson. And, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Right. And um, yeah, and then uh, there's one line in the, uh, in the movie, I think, to the latter part, almost at the end, where they were just convincing this guy and be like, you know, if you take a deep breath and look up, you know, there's a lot of possibilities. Because the... What happened was the guy they were trying to, the person they were trying to convince was struggling in business, uh, owning a pizza place or something. I, I can't remember what exactly was the plot, but you know what what was said there really uh, setting for me, where they just said, you know, uh, I think it was Owen Wilson who just said like, you know, if you slow down, take a deep breath, and just look up, there's like a lot of possibilities out there. And yeah. You know, you you be you be fine, and um, yeah, that really sank in for me. And uh, I think when I watched that movie for the first time, I was also stressed about something. I like I honestly can't remember. See, this is this is what I was talking about. <laughs> like, uh, and then I as as I was uh, watching it, I did the same, and you know, it felt I you know I felt a lot better. And yeah, uh, yeah, and then by my forgetting of, <laughs> of the it source it, it worked so <laughs> um, yeah. yeah it's it's something to explore about uh, I'll link the the movie and the um, uh, and the book that I was talking about yeah, um, I, th- yeah. I should have I really should have looked that's, that's a smart one though, literally because I, I always do this when I'm when I'm cycling to uni I always have this moment so I cycle along the um, Hyde Park and there's always like nice trees along there and I'm actually just literally just breathing in the fresh spring at this point spring ish air <laughs> uh, and looking up at the trees and just kind of appreciating the things around you and just kind of not not think about anything other than just what's going on yeah. I think that that's really nice that's like, that's a good tip that we're gonna talk about in a bit I actually I did this uh I, well, I accidentally did this as well. Uh, last weekend, I was just... Because uh, the Sunday was quite a sunny day, and I was I was trying to, like, get out of the house. And uh, I was walking along this uh, this back street uh, next to my flat, and there was just the tip of the spring. I, I think this is, like, beginning of March. And uh, there's some tray blossoms that have... Uh, they have blossomed yeah. uh, in one of in uh, in one of these back streets, and I I just stood there and looked at it, and it was like really relaxing, and yeah. I felt I felt really happy. I took a photo as well, and it's one of those movie moments, like which always looks really cheesy in the movies, um, but then actually in real life that that does kind of happen, you know, not 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 with like the the sun shining down exactly oh. on that one tree but no, it, it does no special like, effect there's no yeah. like background music <laughs> no. but it, you know you, you do get kind of every now and then you do get that vibe and actually if you, if you kind of don't go looking for them but if you kind of let it happen then that's that's really chill yeah like, definitely really relaxed, definitely but, yeah. uh cool so that's briefing uh yeah. something that you can explore so we're gonna expand on this other point as well where um in order to combat the with the anxiety one of the best way is to not worry about it and, and not go at it you know head to head and be like i'm gonna solve this anxiety no. um rather it, it's a good it's a good approach to find other distractions quote unquote and um you know just keep yourself busy and then you don't need to think about it yeah. you know and you I, know i think it's a bit of a fine balance because if it's like a really deeply rooted thing, then you can't just always keep working around it. Mm. So, you know, there's a balance there. But generally speaking, if it's a deadline type thing, then literally just do something else. Yeah. Um, that's, you... such, that's such good advice because you, you can't go wrong with that. You're not, you're not going to gain anything by staring at your screen for those 15 minutes that you could just be 
you know, walking out to your kitchen, getting a glass of water, or just walking around the block. Yeah, that, um, that's what I was talking about with uh, with a, uh, another friend who's in Imperial right now for master study, and uh, I think your your girlfriend is yeah. also there. And uh, this is the time uh, close to their end of term. Yeah, where they have like lots of assignments compounded with lots of exams in the following week, yeah. and that. Uh, you know, being through that, I can tell you it's quite stressful. I mean, I haven't been through a master study, but that's what I would have imagined. Um, yeah. No, yeah. Th- those are definitely the moments where actually running away from your worries is, yeah. for, you know, for moments at a time. I always force my, my girlfriend to take regular breaks. Uh-huh. Um, just like, yes, that's that's 10 minutes where you're not doing anything, but actually what would you get done in those 10 minutes anyway? Mm. You're just sitting there worrying. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I. Uh, so this friend I was uh, talking about. So we we actually just I actually just pinned her and be like, do you want to like, uh, chat up over a cup of coffee or something? And then and we just like chat about things because I think she is she is joining Google later in this year oh, uh, yeah. once she graduates. So, uh, so it's you know it's nice to keep some contact. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's we just talk about you know life in general and uh afterwards i think you know she she felt you know it's a bit more open to this i mean she has to go back to work uh to, not to work to uni and focus back on those assignments but still uh it's a good break and i think you know i don't know if it helped with uh the progress but i hope it did <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's always good just resetting your brain uh, yeah yourself. Definitely. You know, actually technically breathing in and getting some oxygen back in your system. Mm-hmm. Stop you from jerking out. Yeah, no, it's um, yeah. underrated taking yeah. breaks. And there's a shameless plug for me. Uh, if you want to find some stuff to, some sort of distraction for you, check out last week's episode on the hobbies that we did. <laughs> um, it's a great it's a good, idea. Yeah, it's a good tip on yeah. how to find something for yourself. And <laughs> All according to plan, this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and I actually wrote a separate point here. Um, I was reading, I was reading uh, from... Uh, from the forums the other day and there was someone talking writing about the same uh, issue about anxiety and then their way of dealing with it is actually blogging so either they would blog about their anxiety itself or like I'm worried about this kind of stuff blah 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 which is like you know uh, writing it down as we said before yeah I guess that kind of goes it. back to that same thing yeah, yeah. and uh, what's, uh, the other good point is because you I mean, depends on how comfortable you are with like sharing this kind of stuff. But this person is comfortable, and they shared um, through their blogs. And what happened is, other people will read it, and um, people who have been through that or been through similar situations will chime in and you know, uh, sort of give you tips, or if not, just you know, give um, solidarity on on you know. Yeah being in this situation and telling you it's going to be all right. I think in general, when you, when you have this kind of thing going on, people are your best friends because, um, you know, just having someone tell you it'll be fine. It always sounds a bit pointless, but in the end, I, I at least for me, it does kind of, it, it does kind of help. Yeah. And I feel, I, I know of myself, I, I used to always isolate myself when I'm getting anxious, but actually it's, it's, it works way better for me to go out and just talk to people, even if it's not about what I'm going through. Just talking to people and yeah, um, this yeah. yeah, this was something uh, that in the beginning of uh, of me and Caprice's relationship we had to work out quite a bit, where um, she would get stress, uh, she would get anxiety from some stuff because uh, that was a, that was a change in time for her to be honest. Uh, so. But what she does is she just kind of bottled it up and without like telling anybody, yeah, uh, not even to me. And uh, so we have to we had to work through that. And fortunately, I was able to con- convince that you know, uh, talking to me, uh, I mean, her problems will not worry me per se. Uh, y- you know, we are a team, and you know, it's okay. And um, and the fact that she has expressed it to another person and I was able to, you know, tell her, you know, it's going to be all right. And, uh, you know, having that consolation 
uh, said to you, it's it's really powerful in in you know helping you getting through it. In you know maybe it's it's something very psychological. It doesn't really because me saying it's gonna be alright doesn't mean it's gonna actually be alright. But no. still, um, from the person who's having the anxiety, uh, from their side, you know. It's a, it's a good hope. It's it's something to yeah. hope for, right? It's, you know, and if uh, if enough people tell you it'll be fine, then surely at some point your brain will kind of start to like I don't I don't know anything about brains, but yeah, I know, mean I, I wouldn't you know the whole placebo thing. I reckon your brain is better at solving problems than you actually think it might be. Yeah, I mean for for us, you know, for like stuff that she was worried about. Some of it turned out to be fine, and we were happy about that. Some other things turned out to be not actually too fine, and there were problems, and uh, we were still able to work through it. And yeah. you know, ha- it's just a matter of um, acceptance and uh, and also like expressing it out. Yeah, yeah just um, so yeah. yeah. One one good tip here is. If you're feeling stress, if you're feeling anxiety, talk to your friends and talk to, uh, talk to your family. Your family will always listen. And uh, yeah, I, I probably uh, didn't say this to my family enough, but I'm really grateful for their yeah. listening to my bitching all these years. And <laughs> <laughs> talk to family, but I would also say like, don't be embarrassed to talk to professionals either. Um, I feel like I feel like it's in some people's eyes it's a taboo. So yeah, like that, it's a weakness, uh, especially um, in Asian. Uh, yeah, I culture. reckon that might actually be worse there. Yeah. But I, uh, friends of mine have actually, I've, I've told them like, go find someone to talk to. That actually, you know, c- can actually help you. Because um, sometimes it's not enough to talk to your friends and write it down and take a breather. Sometimes you do need someone, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so just then, you know, uh, don't be afraid to seek help. Uh, that's really just the point here, and. Yeah. Uh, be it professional help or otherwise, yeah. um, just oh, you can always ask, right? And if people say, "Oh, uh, I would like to help you," and I I understand, I sympathize with your pain, but I, you know, that's about it. And you are, uh, you and you require more, uh, you know. In that point, you know, maybe talk yeah. to someone who's actually qualified to do, yeah. <laughs> to discuss these things. We're qualified for a reason, so yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, there's another point uh, that I wrote here, which this this um, I I'm a bit hesitant on t- of listing it here because this has only worked in fiction and not in real life. Uh, <laughs> where uh, I don't know if it is true. I'll try to hunt it down. There's a saying in Hungary. Uh, uh, I don't know what the actual uh, translation is, but so the saying was it it is shameful to walk away from challenges but it's useful okay that's an interesting one um so i guess the the uh sentiment was you know you can take a break and and it's there's no sort of uh it's it's perhaps a bit hard for you or for hard for anybody to accept defeat or accept setbacks but you know it's okay to, to take a step back. And uh, again, like this has only happened in fiction. I, I have not had this kind of type of uh, experiences. Um, I mean, I, I, that's I not true, right? Because like we've all have failures in our lives and, you know, you just try to like look back up from, you know, from, yeah. uh, from where you fell. And uh, I don't know if that's what the... <laughs> What the saying is trying to, I mean, I'm not Hungarian. But yeah, it, it sounds. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's more applicable to more dramatic things than we were talking about. Yeah, but, but yeah, I, I can I can sort of see that, you know. But so sometimes fighting fighting the inevitable is not going to help you anyway. So you might as well just kind of yeah go with the flow. My my feeling has always been, you know, to the very very worst case, that you are going to like things are going to turn out badly, um, you know, just accept it and uh yeah. you know it's it's perhaps not the best uh look to to shy away from from a challenge or from something that was expected of you but you know it's um expectations can be motivating and also devastating yeah right 
Uh, it's all a matter of like uh, what is expected. And also, you don't really get to set what is expected of you. Some it's mostly uh, yeah, determined other by one. other people. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, um, yeah. I guess this this one probably isn't more. Uh, it's it's not as applicable as others. Yeah. Uh, but just have that in mind. I guess like in sometimes when you when things are inevitably gonna fail and just um, you know accept it and yeah. you know you'll be just, you'll be all right and, and just you can always come back up. I think that's the gist of it. You'll be all right. Yeah, I'll be all right. We'll all be all right. <laughs> this is yeah. such a such a good topic to pick in this time of year, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like. I was wondering if you were expecting me to actually bring a personal story and I was like, you know, what's bringing me anxiety? Talking about anxiety. <laughs> that's actually, or like the coronavirus right now, that's actually anxiety inducing. Yeah. It's, uh, but it's good. I, I mean, to be honest, it's, it's not, a, again, it's not the hottest of topics. No. Uh, but I, I do feel like it is something, especially now where, where this, in sort of a verge of a pandemic and also a lot of things getting affected by it. people are having anxieties uh about because of this and hmm. uh for us you know we do feel it as well and uh but you know there are uh, i'm not saying that we've we've uh sort of handled it perfectly but <laughs> we, we are handling it and yeah. uh so can you and you know I think the yeah again just to bring it back to the point from the beginning where uh, a lot of everybody will have anxiety and you know it's just a matter of controlling it and uh, handling it. You, yeah, you can't eliminate it for sure, oh. Oh. Uh, but you can also always handle it and just. Uh, you can learn to live with it. Yeah, um, it's I'm, not always a bad thing. Also, it's no. it's just that you know, uh, don't let it become a. Uh, a negative aspect in you and yeah. uh, there are many many ways to deal with it and uh, just a personal touch on this and um, out of everything that we've discussed which tip do you think is the the best the, uh, the most useful for you um, I'm gonna say talking to people that's that's the one that like I didn't I didn't do naturally Mm. and I slowly got into it and that is, that's really made a difference to me mm. um, yeah. I'm, I'm actually fairly alright on that I mean the, <laughs> I've gone through an emo phase where I didn't want to talk <laughs> to anybody uh, you, you'll go for it like if you haven't you it's it's there <laughs> it's coming around the corner uh, just, just wait till you're 40 <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um, yeah so after that I think uh, I mean I used to be quite outgoing quite um extroverted but now i'm a bit more introverted because of what has befallen me and uh, <laughs> but still i i don't shy away from talking um talking about uh my problems to people sometimes uh, actually i think a couple of years back uh someone told me that you know you 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 you, uh, you complain too much <laughs> you, you don't have to listen i'm not gonna say what i want to say so <laughs> uh so yeah um for me uh, i don't know i think for me though i i'm a bit more um practical type of uh, type of person i think you know what changes in your mind always ch- always starts with action Oh. So I I actually want I like I actually like a bit more practical tip here, which is you know trying to find trying to find distractions and other things that to keep uh, keep you busy. Uh, personally, I I find music to be quite a soothing uh, gateway yeah. okay. <laughs> from from, uh, from stress and especially stress from work. And um, I tend not to I've I've grown not to listen to music while coding. Uh, which means when I'm listening to music, it's the one I'm not coding, and when I'm just relaxing. And okay, that's um, yeah, so that that's been uh, that's been a change that I've made recently, and it's proven very very useful. Huh. Uh, I mean, do whatever you like if you want. <laughs> if you like listening to music while coding, do that. And um, but yeah, or you can another thing that I've seen people do is they. Uh, they will listen to they will like listen to normal music or like stuff that they like and 
you can reserve a particular genre, uh, for example, like classical music, just for chilling out. I've seen the I've seen the polar I've seen people use, using death metal to chill out. But <laughs> <laughs> if it works for you, then yeah. To each their own, right? Yeah. yeah, just like ACDC blasting out from the headphones that I can listen, that I can also hear from my feet away. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Do do um do something um other than uh, thinking about it I guess yeah and there's there's probably a point where it's you've thought about it enough and to go beyond that is uh, will only bring you pain I guess yeah all right cool uh so that's this week's episode and uh I realized when I was editing last week's episode I ended very abdu- uh, abruptly because I <laughs> there's there's a fair Bit of BTS that we cut out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I, I think <laughs> I've I've said my I've said Capri's name so many times during this episode. Oops. It almost feel like this is this is an episode for her, but you know, um, it is. Uh, <laughs> but still, I think for uh, anybody else uh, listening to this, there's something in the episode that will be useful to you from from our experiences. Just um, have a listen and. If you have something that you disagree on, or I've missed anything, or we've missed anything of importance, um, definitely let us know in the comments. Uh, I'm actively working on dealing with all of my uh, stressful things. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. So thank you very much for joining in, and let us know about your episode, uh, your uh, thoughts, and comment on anything that we missed. This episode is on YouTube and also on Spotify, Google Play, Podcast, and iTunes. So all of them. Find us anywhere you have. I've yeah, I've spent so much time getting all of this. <laughs> I, I feel proud to announce this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. See, see you next week. Not next week because I'm not here next week. But yeah, they, they, okay, they, they they're not they gonna know that. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I'm not gonna see them next week. It, we can do a remote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you not next week. See you next week. <laughs> I'm still saying that.